Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us here at the Runners Company for another one of our tech talks. Uh, today, we'll be talking about the remote access solutions from Rockwell um, Automation and how they compare against each other, the best application fit for each product. And then we'll also, at the end, um, discuss the differences between them and some of the other uh, remote access solutions there are in the competitive marketplace uh, currently. Uh, so. I'm Brandon Singh. I'm the network and cybersecurity specialist for the Reynolds Company. Uh, I office out of the DFW location. In the background, ask answering any questions you may have um, that you type into the chat box is Luis Ramos, our business development manager uh, for process networks and cybersecurity. Um, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. As you guys heard, uh, this meeting will be recorded um, and uh, just want to let everybody be aware of that. Uh, so before we dive, dump, jump right in, I wanted to highlight some other um, online events. Uh, previous online events, you can go back and watch the recording as uh, all of our uh, user groups and tech, talk, tech talks are recorded and posted to uh, the Reynolds website and the Reynolds YouTube page. Uh, as also bring your attention to some upcoming topics that will be coming um, on the user group side of things uh, with uh, moder modernization solutions, uh, a power update, as well as uh, uh, View SC uh, update in September as far as user groups. Uh, so remote access uh, solutions, series of events of how we've gotten here. Um, you know, 2019 and previously, it was a traditional work in office or go to the facility, go to the plant uh, to do uh, your daily, da daily functions of work. Um, and then COVID happened and we had our social distancing and times have changed. And since then, over the last uh, 24 months or so, uh, we've adopted a new philosophy with uh, remote work, remote access becoming prevalent um, and how do we keep our efficiency but still maintain uh, you know, guidelines that are currently in place. Uh, and the need for remote connecti uh, connectivity to the industrial machines have been increasing at an accelerated rate um, in the recent times. Uh, so with remote connectivity, um, it allows, um, you know, a lifeline between machine builders and customers. It also addresses customer needs for maintenance and support. It uh, strengthens the customer relationships between vendors and um, OEMs. Uh, it also has remote connections on demand and we can maximize the value of smart machines and other digital transformation efforts um, that are you know, seamlessly going on as everybody transitions into uh, this new wave of IoT and IIoT and Industry 4.0, uh, we can maximize the, the value of smart machines through remote connectivity. And some of the, the outcomes of instant machine access and information uh, bringing more value to organizations. We have more responsive support um, from technical teams and uh, remote, remote, re remote services, uh, more e uh, e effective commissioning. Um, if you're an OEM, you can commission multiple machines at one time um, through remote access versus uh, just deploying somebody on site to the one customer. Uh, we can production optimization. We can optimize production um, by having that real-time data and being able to connect to the machine real-time. Network accessibility, being able to monitor everything from a single pane of glass uh, by being able to connect to everything remotely. And then software and firmware management. Uh, that way, if there are any type of uh, vulnerabilities or um, vulnerabilities that are discovered, it's an easy uh, use case uh, for being able to update and, and patch that piece of machinery uh, from a remote aspect without having to deploy somebody to do so in person. Uh, so the first one we're going to talk about, the first solution we're going to talk about is going to be an on-machine application. This would be targeted toward more of an OEM and machine builder um, and someone who's doing remote acts, uh, remote work uh, for technician-wise for those same OEMs. Uh, so this would be the remote access uh, solution from Rockwell Automation. Uh, it, it combines their factory talk remote access software along with their new remote uh, access 
uh, router. Uh, and it can be leveraged to outcome the challenges seen in remote work by encouraging collaborations uh, between local and remote teams. And the Stratix 4300 is the access router. It's a hardware device that's gonna be installed on the machine and used to enable remote connectivity. Um, and the factory taught remote access uh, software uh, is the uh, software used to, um, as far as uh, maintenance and uh, connection and getting connection within uh, that 4300 router. Uh, so so uh, just to high level overview, uh, the 4300 is a remote access router. It's hardware component you put on the machine um, that you access through the VPN connection. Uh, the server infrastructure, uh, that is the distributed cloud-based server infrastructure um, that is maintained through uh, Rockwell Automation. So when you are in the last piece is the factory talk remote access uh, software, uh, it's web-based software. So when you log into the remote access software, which is point three, you, excuse me, would be connecting to the server infrastructure for that secure remote access secure uh, connection point, uh, which would go through Rockwell uh, automation. And, and then from there, it, they would connect back down to the 4300 access router. Uh, so some of the key features on it uh, is easy and initiative web-based interface uh, for configuration. Uh, the VPN top technology is optimized for industrial connectivity. Um, it does have advanced options for auditing and logging for administration. That way, you know, if somebody is remoting in and making changes, we can, we, you can audit that and log it. Um, the software subscription license model is based off the number of concurrent user connections. Um, and it integrates with Factory Talk Hub, uh, the new Rockwell Automation cloud-based production suite. So uh, Factory Talk remote access, the highlights, um, integrated with Factory Talk Hub, as I mentioned, um, it uses uh, the familiar My Rockwell account credentials. Uh, so if you have a My, My Rockwell account credentials, you uh, once you have once you actually uh, have access to the remote access software, you have the same login. It is the web-based client centralized for management of the solution. The 4300 access router is the hardware piece. As I said, this is what would go onto your machine or your SCID or whatever as an OEM that you're, you're building and providing for your end user for uh, the appropriate skills and resources. So you don't have to deploy um, a technician out to the field if there's, if there's an issue or if you're maintaining it, you can be able to do all of that remotely and it, it reduces your cost from that standpoint. Um, and it's going to be offered in a two port or five port variant uh, with the router itself. Um, as I said, the, the capability of this, there's going to be the same. They both offer gig ports. Uh, they both have digital input and outputs, and they both have a serial port um, the, uh, available on both of them. The difference is going to be the actual port density, whether you want a uh, two uh, ports or a five port access router. Um, now, in or you do need in order to utilize the access router of uh, the 4300, you do need again the subscription to the factory talk remote access subscription. Um, you can't use the hardware without the subscription. Uh, and each uh, subscription will be limited by the number of concurrent VPN users. So this would be. Uh, an overall solutions overview, as I mentioned. So you, as the OEM, would be logging in to the remote access uh, software. That software then connect to that cloud infrastructure that is being managed by Rockwell Automation. And then you'd connect back to the machine at the end user through that 4300 uh, hardware. Um, and, that, and that is how that all works there. So the next solution we'll be talking about would be more geared toward end users, uh, would be purely a software piece. Um, so Clarity uh, is the cybersecurity partnership uh, that Rock Automation has leveraged over the last few years. Um, and they've been working together since 2016. Uh, and they've been able to uh, have uh, a platform that's purely built for ICS and industrial uh, markets. 
Um, now, while Clarity is a um, true cybersecurity uh, company for the OT space and multiple uh, product offerings, we will be focusing on their secure remote access offering today. Now, we will talk about the main use cases for the SRA and the particular targets. Now, uh, right now, uh, the top bullet, the top part of this diagram shows how a remote vendor would remote in using a software into the OT network um, prior to having an SRA uh, installed. Now, the point of the SRA is to segregate, secure, and monitor the remote access. So as you see through the diagram that, you know, the, the connection point from the remote user would just log in through the credentials, go through the firewall. Uh, with the SRA installed, we would go through the firewall, but we they wouldn't get immediate access to the OT network. They would then have to go through the uh, SRA uh, central appliance, go through another firewall, and then through the reverse tunnel to gain access. And that access would have to be authorized through the SRA admin, either at the time of connection, or you could pre-set it if you are... Um, if you were looking to schedule this remote access, you can have it set and have that time limit uh, set for it. Now, the, the key requirement or challenge is the third party vendor reform, you know, requires to perform maintenance on the OT asset located behind the firewalls. Uh, local users connects directly to the OT asset. Uh, the SRA solution segregates the remote vendors. Uh, from the OT network and the underlying asset and eliminates the direct connection to the assets made by local users. Uh, any action that's uh, done um, by the third party when going through the SRA is recorded and monitored and audited in the security logs. Uh, so what do we mean by se segre segregating? Um, the SRA breaks down the communication and the, pro, um, and the protocol using uh, what they call reverse tunneling. So the connection is established from the internal OT side of the network outward, and that's a more secure. Whereas previously, you'd be connecting from the outside in, where we'd be, in this case, using SRA, we'd be connecting from the inside out. Um, and that is that is done via the SRA components and is not uh, directly to the target is completely monitored and ran um, through the SRA appliance. Uh, same thing goes for secure file, uh, file transfer. So uh, as we mentioned earlier, if you're doing any type of firmware updates and we need to drop in the firmware package previously, uh, prior, if you know you don't have an SRA and you're just connected to the firewall, and you can drop that, you know that uh, upgrade packet right into the network uh, using SRA. You would go through the you go through the firewall, but the packet itself would then be inspected to make sure there was no malicious intent, and with that firmware upgrade, so that you know it is running a true upgrade packet that has been verified. So this uh, is what a typical deployment architecture would look like. And then this is based off the Purdue model. Now, obviously not all customers have a true Purdue model laid out um, in this aspect. So we, you know, a true deployment would be modified to fit how it would best fit the end user and the customer. Uh, but this example uh, diagram is based off the Purdue, the Purdue model uh, where you'd have when you are deploying the SRA, you have two instances. You have the remote access uh, central, and then you have the remote access site. And then what that is, is the central is where is the connection point where the end user or the vendor would be logging into. Um, and then it'll go through the firewall. And then from the firewall, it'll connect back to the site. And the site is where then it will give you access to the actual plant itself. That way is, that is how we're handling the true segmentation. Uh, so prior to a deployment of SRA, this is what it would typically look like if you had concurrent users trying to log in at one time. You may have third, different third-party technicians, remote employees, all using different, um, using different forms of remote access. Um, but using the SRA, 
uh, we would be moving everybody to a secure connection, everybody to be using the same type of connection through, uh, via HTTPS in port 4443, um, and we'd be able to control it, we'd be able to monitor it, and we'd be able to audit it. So uh, with the privileged access control uh, portion of it, being able to control it, uh, we would be able to um, compromise remote access credentials and lead to, uh, we would actually limit, I'm sorry, limit the compromised remote access credentials uh, for unauthorized users. Uh, reason is, is we'd be able to provide a strong access control list as far as who is able to connect, who's not able to connect. Um, and it would eliminate the inherent lack of monitoring and audit auditing capabilities. Uh, with the active management monitoring, as I mentioned, we're able to capture and log um, real-time sessions. Uh, you can actually terminate a session if somebody's doing, if you come, if you're you know reviewing a session because you can uh, monitor them real time. If someone's doing something, you see something doing something. Uh, that they shouldn't have been doing, we can terminate the session right there from the admin um, and, and eliminate their connection point and end it right there, as well as uh, being able to record it and view back later. Uh, and with the audit and, audit and forensics of the parts, we, this is where the auditing um, requirements come in. So we're able to capture the, the, the data of what they're doing um, and able to facilitate and audit it so that if something were to happen after somebody was connected in, we could go back and view it and make sure that everything was done correctly and make sure that somebody wasn't doing something um, incorrect or if they weren't doing anything malicious. Now, the last piece is the secure application tunnel. Uh, so this is where I mentioned it, you logging in through uh, the SRA and it goes through that central appliance and then from the central appliance it then authenticates to the site itself. That way, when we are we are logging in, we are making sure that the uh, access is the appropriate um, allocate appropriate for the location and that they're not getting access to anything that they're not supposed to be getting access to providing that least privilege. Um, so some comparisons, we're gonna start with the hardware. As I mentioned, the Stratix 4300 um, and the uh, remote factory talk remote access. Uh, some of the key competitors in very similar products come from HMS and Ewan, ProSoft and Sycomia, where you know, the, you're looking at you know, the, the number of ports, whether it be, uh, as I said, the Rockwell product has a two or five port option. And then you look, you know, if you're looking at some of these other competitors, a lot of the um, competitors are very similar in terms of digital inputs and outputs, um, having a remote runtime application, um, as far as the devices and number of users, uh, whether it be web-based application or an installable software. So these are all other on-machine um, solutions that are, are, are available that would be very similar and uh, competitive to the Stratix 40, uh, 4300 um, hardware solution for from an OEM standpoint. And then in terms of uh, the factory talk uh, remote access and the Stratix 4300 versus the Clarity SRA, uh, key difference, as I mentioned, is the hardware and the fact 4300 in the factory talk remote access is gonna be geared toward an OEM use, whereas the Clarity SRA is gonna be geared more toward an end user. Um, so that's where the key differences are. And then uh, as far as the, down toward the bottom, you'll notice the ties to Active Directory um, and the tracking of remote actions taken via the remote, the remote sessions and auditing, that are, those are more geared toward end users. Um, than it is geared toward an OEM, whereas the uh, Clarity SRA, as I said, gives you access to more of the actual site location in the site facility. The factory taught remote access and the 4300 says for being that it's for OEMs, you're gonna be tied into that machine. And so you'd be, you'd be able to communicate with things within that machine, but not, necessar not necessarily the entire plant.
Um, so I know I went through that relatively quickly. Um, and that's, did we have any questions that came across in the chat or Q and A? I think we're good for now. Okay. Uh, well, thank you everyone for attending um, and I appreciate your time.